All right, would you join me for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is the Monday, May 9th regular meeting of town council. Uh, roll call. The only member of council not with us this evening is Mr. Kapoor, who is the honorary parliamentarian, I believe, in Hartford for Jim. Jim. In Bridgeport. Congressman Himes. Yes, oh, Bridgeport. And Mr. Vavrick is in Hartford, I believe, this evening. Um, moving on to the consent calendar. Are there any comments to the consent calendar? Objections? All right, seeing none, I'll pass the consent calendar. Moving on to communications. A memo from the tax collector and town council chairman dated May 4, 2016, regarding the request for refund totaling $10,967.12. B, memo from the first select and the town council chair dated May 5, 2016, regarding donations to Edith Wheeler Memorial Library and the volunteer EMS. C, memo from the first select of the town council chair dated May 5, 2016, regarding the state of Connecticut DOT agreement resolution related to the roundabout. D, memo from the first select of the town council chair dated May 5, 2016, regarding the state of Connecticut DOT agreement resolution related to the Route 25 bridge replacement number 02219. E, memo from the town council chair and EMS liaison to town council chair and LMA chair dated May 5, 2016, regarding the collections and write off policy for EMS billing. F, memo from the Director of Health to Town Council Chair, dated May 5, 2016, regarding the licensing fee policy for new food service establishments. G, memo from the First Selectman to Town Council Chair, dated May 5, 2016, regarding the job description for the EMS <coughs> Administrative Assistant. And H, memo from the First Selectman to Town Council Chair, dated May 6, 2016, regarding the Health Department's licensing fee policy for new food establishments. Uh, moving on to public participation. Ms. Sherpe and Ms. Conniff, do you want to speak together individually? Please do whatever you would like. There you go. Please come forward, name and address for the record, please. One at a time. Judith Sherpe, 42 Great Hollow Drive. Sue Conniff, 7 George's Lane. Um, we're here tonight to talk about the uh, letter that Jim Agustine sent to, to the registrars on April 7th uh, regarding the use of the school facilities for polling. And I'm just going to read the, the first paragraph, and then I'm, Sue is going to read to you and also give you copies of the letter that we sent to him, the superintendent, in response. Okay. The purpose of this letter is to bring to your attention two issues. The first and most immediate is the use of our school facilities <clears throat> for the Connecticut presidential primary on Tuesday, April 26, 2016. During any polling, we open our schools to the public, which is in direct conflict with all our efforts at maintaining secure schools. When we open our schools to the voters, our safety protocols fall by the wayside. We have invested heavily in creating Sally port ports and electronic monitoring throughout the Monroe Public Schools. I am particularly concerned about this presidential primary because there have been, on occasion, demonstrations, protests, at polling places, rallies, etc. At this time, I am requesting that the town provide additional police security for the Connecticut presidential primary at all polling at all school polling locations. <clears throat> and I believe that you all have a copy of that letter. So he went on to further talk about future voting, and um, we can address that. Uh, we responded to him on April 13th. Uh, and with this following memo. We were surprised by your letter of April 7th. Last fall, we took a tour of all the school polling places with you to identify any security issues. Coming out of our meeting, we revised the ingress and egress at Monroe Elementary and Fawn Hollow. It was agreed that with the doors leading directly into areas where school students are housed, are lock locked, there would be no way for voters to enter the school proper. Our only concern was Monroe Elementary School because the doors remained unlocked. Our suggestion was to lock the doors there and have poll workers that needed to use the bathroom go out and get buzzed in at the front door. The Secretary of the State last year requested that all registrars have a conversation with their superintendents regarding the April 26th primary. 
We did follow through and spoke with you last fall about the matter, suggesting that perhaps an in-service day, if it could be arranged, might be a way to avoid disrupting the school's curriculum. The security of our school-age children is, of course, very important to us, as it is with you, and we look forward to meeting about the issues you've raised when the first selectman returns from vacation. We went further and met with Chief, Chief Salvatore, and discussed the issue with him. And he, I don't want to put words in his mouth, so I won't say, but nothing came from that meeting. We did discuss it with him. And he, I believe he had a police officer uh, driving from one school to the other in a rotation throughout the day while the uh, children were um, at school. But we feel we did due diligence. Uh, we spoke to the superintendent in last spring, and then we spoke to him in the fall. Um, Once we found out from the Secretary of State when the official um, presidential primary was, that's when we went to talk to the superintendent, to tell him the date of the school. And it wasn't during the school vacation. It was, you know, in the middle of, um, or the end of April. And we don't, uh, we don't profess to be security uh, experts. We just try and do due diligence and uh, let the powers that be know what we anticipate as uh, problem areas. And we feel we did that. Uh, would it be all right if I give Please. everyone a copy of the letter? We got the letter. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, response. Okay. You're very welcome. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would any other members of the public wish to participate? Seeing none, I'm going to close public participation, move on to, there are no appointments, move on to action items A, Town Council Committee on Finance, edu Education, Health, and Public Safety, Mr. Pellis. Uh, yes, um, normally I'm meeting Mr. Mandros, but he's away on a business trip, so uh, I always get the minutes from Diane Berenger, who's their uh, secretary. So there were two things that, that um, let's say, that the Board of Finance did last Wednesday. They approved the auditors, you, know, you have to have a contract every year for auditors. So they reappointed O'Connor Davis as auditors. And then they had a whole discussion on the park and recreation contra funds to purchase a dock for, for Lake Zor. The, the dock apparently by Lake Zor is uh, falling apart. And they want to spend uh, and approve $13,347 as requested by Parks and Rec Recreation with funds from Capital Reserve and subject to approval of Park and Rec Recreation for the change in funding. So they're, they're now going to have a new dock. And they also, uh, there was a little extra money, which they're going to use $125,000 for tennis courts. Tennis courts are in, in really bad shape. And we're lucky nobody has fallen or gotten hurt. So that's what FEPS did. In addition, um, FEPS as a committee, which Mrs. Kansky, Mr. Kellogg, and myself, have been meeting with Mr. Lasky, to, uh, who's a tax assessor, to discuss uh, possible increases in senior tax relief. And we would have met uh, the other day, but Mr. Lasky had a state meeting to go to. So we'll be meeting f uh, on the 19th of May, Thursday at 4 p.m. If anybody is interested in coming, so we have we have more information now about what would a three percent increase do, what would a five percent increase do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, Mrs. Kansky, anything? Just the Commission on Aging. I went to that, and they didn't really have much on their agenda other than the fact that they're. Uh, considering lowering the uh, membership age to 50. It's 55 right now. And then they decided they would do it program by program. Well, good, so I can join. Next, um, Mr. Kellogg the, has a health department and EMS. Yep, thank you. Uh, so the Board of Health met on uh, May 3rd. Um, they were very busy. There's a lot of uh, activity there uh, as relates to stuff that would be. Um, uh, probably you know most relevant to the council uh, two ordinances that they are proposing revisions to uh, the first is chapter 291 which is the food ordinance um, you'll find it's current ordinance is uh, quite outdated on our books so they are work they have um, a pro approved a revised food ordinance they've also looked at um, uh, and my suggestion looked at chapter 305 which is a health and sanitation 
ordinance, which is one just one section. Both of those were approved to forward on to council. Um, I advise that you know, that would obviously go through LNA. Uh, there are some other ones that are being worked on. I thought I would you know, leave it up to you know, Mr. O'Rourke and LNA if they wanted to start looking at those now or uh, wait until later. The um, reason being that there are two other ordinances that would be new that they're going to be taking up next. One is on public pools and the other is on subsurface um, or septic. And um, I don't expect that, that will take long for them to finish those. So the thought process was uh, to deal with all four as one approval. Not, not Obviously, they have to be dealt, dealt with separately, but to go through the ordinance process once with all four of them, as opposed to having to uh, stagger multiple public hearings and everything over many dates. Um, so that's what's uh, in, the, in the queue for ordinances. They discussed the fee schedule, which is later on our agenda, so we, I can discuss that later. Um, but related to the fee schedule uh, was a policy, um, which I know was in your pack in their communications. Um, the board took another look based on um, my request from this council's feedback about the, the issues of food establishments that come in towards the end of the licensing period. Um, they, as you know, had were concerned with proration because of the complexity of administrative issues on that. Um, after taking a second look and finding some um, other towns that may do this in a kind of a more casual fashion, the, um, the board agreed that it was prudent and set a policy where if a food establishment comes in and in it is in the last two months of that licensing period, the fee will be waived. Um, presuming that their entire application fee has been paid um, for the plan reviews, etc. And I'm sorry, not their application fee, their plan review fee. Basically, their application fee would be waived, knowing that the renewal fee, which would come in with, within a month or two, would have to be paid in full for the full, full year. So I thought that was a very reasonable um, and uh, responsive uh, action that they took in regards to our concerns. Um, and that is all I have for health. Uh, I have a quick question. Yes. yes. Did you say two months? Yes, um, it's, in, it's in the packet, I believe it's, uh, there's a health department licensing fee policy for new establishments from uh, the memo from the health director uh, has an attachment which lists the, the full policy that the board approved. So it's basically, they go by a calendar date. So. The, the current renewal period is April 1st through March 31st. So basically from February 1st to March 31st, that's the 60-day window that right. if you have an application that comes in those days, you will pay the fee for the new, the, new, uh, the new plan review, but you will not pay the annual licensing period for, those two, for that. I, I just two wanted to, thank you for that. I wanted to okay. clarify because my other note said three months. Okay. So I must have misunderstood you. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Anything further, Mr. Powell? Nope. All right. Thank um, you. And we have yeah, oh, just, uh, EMS, just a real quick on EMS. Uh, the things that EMS has moved forward was a uh, collections and write-off policy for billing, which I know is on the agenda. Uh, their, the EMS administrator assistant job description changes is also on the agenda. The only thing that is not is just to make the council aware that the contract for daytime staffing with ERM, uh, that contract period ends this calendar year. So uh, the commission, my understanding is that the commission will be uh, putting forth the RFP that they did last time um, to get that process rolling to determine if we want to renew, you know, yeah. if we want to approach a renewal of that or, you know, do our due diligence or what else might be out there. That's all I have. Thank you. And then a public safety, Mr. Rooney, anything? Yeah, no, nothing relevant to uh, town council this time. There is, there are a couple openings in the police department, so they're currently I believe doing the interviews. I'll know more about that when they meet again. Um, but that's it. Right. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you uh, all. Thank you, Mr. Pellis. Moving on to action item B, Town Council Committee on Planning and Zoning, Public Works, and Parks and Recreation Matters. Mr. Reed. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. We, we have not met since the last uh, meeting, but we do, um, I've put some dates. Uh, May 18th is gonna be the proposed date. Uh, the reason why that's relevant is I just met actually with Mr. Stone from the EDC. We're looking to get uh, an update from him on how that uh, progress is uh, being made and any help he does need from council as he starts to look at his uh, look at the expense of his budget for F-17. We want to make sure we keep that that uh, tightly, tightly communicated. 
And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to C, Town Council, Council Committee on Legislative and Administrative Matters, Mr. O'Rourke. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we met uh, this evening uh, before uh, Town Council meeting to discuss uh, DOT rights of way acquisition, acquisition agreements for uh, 6, 7, 5 Main Road Turnpike and 19 Old Newtown Road. These, uh, these affect the new roundabout and the uh, bridge 25 replacement. Um, we also uh, reviewed uh, emergency medical services administrative uh, assistant job description and began discussions on collections and write-off policy uh, procedures for EMS. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, Ms. Martin. Uh, Mr. O'Rourke, can, can we put, um, officially put uh, the ethics revision on our next meeting? Is that possible? Um, our plan is to have uh, ethics uh, reviewed at our next LNA. Um, that, I mean, that's, that's my intention. Um, what's happened, as you've been aware since the beginning of the year, is there's just been so many items that have popped up relatively sure. last moment that have forced it to be pushed back. And this evening's meeting was uh, literally 30 minutes long for a couple of, uh, you know, some important issues to discuss and, 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 and approve and, and move forward on. So barring any uh, problems with regards to emergency or immediate action <coughs> items that we have to take into consideration, the intention is to address the ethics, uh, the ethics uh, committee uh, uh, policy. Okay, thank you. All right, moving on to action item D, which is the Strategic Planning Committee. Mr. Keller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Strategic Planning Committee uh, met last on May 4th. Um, there were two items on our, our agenda at that time. Um, I just want to say first that, I, I, for the record, we have not lost sight of the part-time pay plan. Uh, my intent was to put it on the agenda. However, I was asked by Ms. Lombardi that they uh, still needed some additional time to work on that, so I did not, uh, we did not put it on the agenda for the last meeting, but it is on our radar. I'm waiting for Ms. Lombardi to let us know when she's ready to move forward. So that said, there were two items on the agenda. One um, in regards to the fire apparatus, uh, which is on our agenda to discuss this evening, so I won't, uh, I won't go into it in any further here. Um, and the second item was that of a fire study. Um, essentially, what we have discussed is the concept um, which uh, I think was uh, embraced by the fire services as well is to uh, go down a path of uh, looking towards a study that would look at the entire fire system in our town, uh, given the complexity that we, we have and the needs of the town that, that would obviously continue to change. Um, they have done some work in that regard. We've asked them to come back with a little bit more uh, structured scope of work uh, for us to review further, but um, it is our intent that we try to move that forward. We think that for a you know, relatively reasonable consulting fee, we can get a, um, a outside study uh, that would give us some recommendations that would serve as more or less a, a strategic plan for the fire service um, well into the future for the town of Monroe. So, that's, uh, that's that item, some more to come later. Um, the only other item I wanted to report on, although it was not part of our meeting, um, but since this was sent to me um, in, my, in my capacity as SPC chair, I received a uh, communication from uh, Mr. Cooper, uh, Parks and Rec, in regards to Chalk Hill. Um, and I just wanted to, I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase this, uh, communication, but basically stating that a, an interdepartmental meeting was held, um, this was on May 4th, with Public Works Finance, the first elections office, in regards to Newtown's intent to begin um, uh, basically exiting the facility, starting June, the process of starting to exit the facility June 17th. Uh, the fact that um, they believe that they have a, pro uh, this is the, the, you know, the town department's being made aware of approximately $190,000 towards Chalk Hill for fiscal year 1617, um, that they would restrict their day camp operations uh, to the building uh, to maintain a distance from any efforts that Newtown was working on. The, but Monroe's summer day camp will commence on June 20th at Chalk Hill, and that Parks and Rec will be fully prepared to re enter the facility and begin operations in August, um, and that his intent is to begin preparations. 
um, in earnest for the 16-17 school year for two after-school programs uh, that he is currently developing. And that other pro programming would follow uh, in the normal scheduling, normal course of scheduling. Um, and that he's looking to have an active and regular presence in the building to manage it properly. Uh, and that, it, from my understanding, this, this phrase here would, would seem to me that he's looking to actually move into the building, saying expedited departments move to the building. Infrastructure planning and logistics details will be discussed at the next meeting scheduled for May 10th. Um, and they're going to start pulling in uh, IT and Board of Ed facilities. Um, he concludes with, should the a strategic planning committee have significant issues with the present direction that's being undertaken, please relay your concerns at your earliest convenience. So given that um, the committee is really just an arm of the council, I, I bring it to the council in the spirit of, if this council has any concerns with the direction, I think it's appropriate that you know, that communication, we, we voice it with one vote. I will say from my perspective, um, you know, I'll start with my, my only initial concern is, I, while I applaud his, um, you know, Mr. Cooper's um, taking ownership of this so strongly to the point where he's like, I want to physically be there. My only concern is understanding that um, there's a somewhat limited window to prove, you know, demonstrate that we can make Chalk Hill viable. Um, I hate to have that, you know, if there's a significant cost in that regard, um, I don't know what the ramifications are should he have to vacate and move back out of the facility if that operation proves unsuccessful. Because you know, we have this activity, we also know the first selective we're looking at other external agencies. I don't know where that stands. So I just, that's my only caution. But so on one hand, I think, um, again, I, I like the fact that he's trying to uh, move this forward, but you know, there, that's my concern. So other than that, I, with the chair's uh, permission, I'd, I'd like to understand if there's any other concerns or anything we want to relate to Mr. Cooper uh, in that regard. Um, is there anything else about your report other than that? Uh, that's, that's the end of my strategic planning. All right, so um, just I want to thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, I, I do agree with Mr. Kellogg um, in that SPC is just an arm of council. So I think it's important that each of us give their comments at this point, just to make sure that um, we're all aware and having active discussion. If we think it needs to be a formal agenda item, we can we can do that. We can we can actually move and, and add this to new business if we think that's if we think that's appropriate, based upon the discussion. Uh, if not, um, everybody's welcome to do their due diligence, and we can certainly have this on the agenda next time. But um, Mr. Kelly gave his comments. Why don't we just go? Uh, Ms. Before we begin, Ms. Kansky, do you have something to say or a question? Yeah, I just, you know, I was at the Commission on Aging meeting and they were talking about maybe trying to get some programs moved over there. And I was just wondering where where we are on, <clears throat> on what we think we might want to do with Chalk Hill. Has it gotten, have you gotten into that or did I miss it along the way? Some of the things that may be planned for that school? Well, I think to answer that, if I might, um, uh, the Strategic Planning Commission did um, put forth a very, uh, I think, complete um, statement and report mm -hmm. that was endorsed by this complete council. Right. So I, I think at this point there is clear direction with Chalk okay. Hill. Um, I think that in conjunction with the budgetary process, um, I, I think there's a misstatement in the, uh, it should be addressed, that the the apparent um, line item for $190,000 to be spent on Chalk Hill is not accurate. That is what we think, um, I, in my conversations with finance and the Board of Finance, there may be a cumulative amount of $190,000 in various line items, including the contingency that existed from Sandy Hook School that may total $190,000, but the commitment from Council uh, and the Board of Finance, I believe, was $50,000. I think we left 75000 roughly in there. It was reduced by Board of Finance further to fifty. Right. And really, the, I, that was to support the report's uh, finding, conclusion, was that we, we applaud and believe that uh, Mr. Cooper is going to do everything within his individual power to try to make a viable purpose out of his use of Chalk Hill. And mm -hmm. if it's for the better best interest of the town, for the better good of the town, right. then I think we would all endorse it. But it was a very, as, as Mr. Kelly put, I think a small window to um, to prove that. And the intention was, at least as I remember it, not to budget money for um, 
excessive use of the building over the cold period of time, the winter months, where we have to spend money on oil and heat. So if we couldn't show viable progress by that time, then we had the opportunity to just, I don't want to say shut it down, I don't know if that's appropriate, but so to go in a different forward. direction, go in a different direction. Um, so that's, that's, that's where it was. I, I personally, just, just to comment on the plan, um, I, uh, I don't think I ever thought that Parks and Recreation would physically move over to Chalk Hill. However, I'm not opposed to it. I do think he does make a good point that if he's going to put his full effort, and I'm speaking to, about Mr. Cooper, put his full effort into the programming, which includes after school programming and summer programming that runs heavily out of Chalk Hill, that he may be best served to be there. So I, I'm not against that. I do think that it's important that we not modify or alter the current parks and recreation quarters in case it doesn't work out so they have to come back, mm -hmm. number one. Um, and number two is the only concern I have is to make sure that um, we've gone through the proper procedures internally for zoning and building and all the other steps that have to be undertaken to make sure that we can use the building for its purpose. So assuming all that's true, I, I don't have a problem with the, with the plan moving forward. And as I said, it's a test case and we'll see how it goes. That's my opinion. That's mine. Um, a, a, a concern I would have from the comments that Mr. Kellogg read was that there was a meeting with the selectmen and finance and stuff, you know, all together. Yet we've been given some minor indication, innuendo, whatever, that perhaps there were some other entities that were possibly, and that's a lot of perhaps, possibly, maybe that kind of stuff, looking at this spot. Yet Mr. Cooper indicates that he met with the selectmen, but doesn't seem to have any idea of where that process is. Um, and I would be interested in, I, I think we would be interested in knowing that ourselves, and certainly I, I would assume Mr. Cooper would be interested in if somebody else has their eye on the spot and he's going full speed ahead trying to expand some programs there. So there seems to be a bit of a disconnect um, of what we've possibly heard and Mr. Cooper actually meeting uh, with the selectmen and maybe not hearing that. Do you have an opinion? Um, unfortunately, Ms., uh, the first selectman is not here this evening to answer your questions, but mm -hmm. if you have any questions that you need answered, you can certainly present them to me and I'd be happy to. I have a, I have a long list of certainly questions. Certainly you can do it on your own as well. You can certainly bypass me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be offended. Much rather go through um, Do you have an opinion on anything else in the report there for other email from Mr. Cooper? No, well, when we met with Mr. Cooper in strategic planning, I, I thought it was, it was mildly encouraging. It was kind of like the, at that time, the first good news that we heard in a long time. And certainly he, he was rather passionate about it. Mm -hmm. um, felt that he could, you know, perhaps work out this after school program and everything. And if that was to all come to fruition, I think that'd be a, a good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the flip side of that is the things that like Mr. Leto had mentioned, that uh, they're gonna be there in the winter and the boilers and the heat and you know all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But I, I'm at this point supportive of of him moving ahead and trying to make something of this. But at that same time, I caution him to he better find out what, I don't know whether it's the right hand or the left hand, but what the other hand's doing. Just to, just to add on, I mean, I, I want to also point out, um, Mr. It was determined um, on or about, um, looking for the date here, May 5th, um, believe it or not, the town council adopted and uh, the report on February 22nd. Um, certainly prior to that, SPC had form informally adopted it, so it had been around for some time. Um, uh, it was determined that uh, on or about May 5th that many, if not all, department heads did not have possession of that report. So I um, asked uh, Ms. Bombero to ensure that all the department heads had the report formally, which uh, I think we all had presumed would have made its way around town hall. And I think Mr. Cooper included did not have our report, so it's probably some of the reason for the disconnect and, and mm -hmm. certainly why he 
sent the email in response asking for our opinion because he was not aware of the report and most likely had made plans moving forward without knowing about it. So I can confirm that as of May 5th, all the department heads now have the report, which would include obviously the important ones, DPW and um, Parks and Recreation, as well as the Board of Ed. I know prior to that, I know that Mr. Uh, Nowacki had specifically asked, asked me about the status of it, and I gave him the report as well. So. All right. So thank you for that. And, uh, so so May, May 5th, they all received the report. I can confirm as to May 5th, but I, I also want to thank Mr. Kellogg for his work in um, bringing it to my attention very quickly that uh, he learned that mm, there were some very integral parts in departments in town that did not have the report. So okay. much of the rhetoric was, I think, caused by the lack of notice on the report. Anyway, Ms. Kansky, any comments on no, uh, Ms. LaPellis, anything? No. Nope. Would you? I, I agree with, with you. Okay. Sure. Nothing further to add. <coughs> Stewie? Okay. Mr. Rooney? Sir. If we can get okay. it to work, that'd so be I think that's an. I mean, can we say that's an informal endorsement of yep. Mr. Cooper? And I, I think yep. an endorsement with with some caveats, which I have. Uh, I have five bullets here from what Excellent. everyone has stated. Right. I think maybe between myself and sure. Mr. Lita, we can uh, come up with draft a response that yeah. could. That okay. Could okay. you email that's it great. to us so we can see it? I'm sorry. Could you email it to us so we can see? You want it? to proofread it also? No, I'd oh. like to read it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We can, we can trying to keep the meeting alive. We'll make okay. sure the, the council has the full. Uh, All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Kellogg, for that yeah. uh, hard work. Moving on, you're not off the hook yet. EMS facility work group. You're, oh, you're back on. Okay. Well, back on. <laughs> so the EMS facility work group met on May 2nd. Uh, a few items. One is we discussed, um, I'll be briefly, the steep grant um, contract package, if you will, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, it is a very large compilation of multiple, multiple documents. Um, I just wanted to say that I met with the finance director, uh, Mr. Bonofsky, who was kind enough to um, spend a considerable amount of time with me going through a lot of those documents. We wanted to just ensure that there was no deliverable due to the state that put the award in jeopardy, uh, any kind of a time frame that we needed to achieve. Um, I had a subsequent conversation with our contact at the Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection at the state um, and ensured that we, there is no hard date that we need to get this contract uh, submitted by. The package is quite extensive and would require significantly more information than we have now in terms of like an actual final building construction budget, etc. So we're quite a ways away from that period. Once that is done, though, that once that MOU is executed with the state for the grant, then the clock, there is a clock that starts ticking for two years. And unless you get an extension for that, two years is pretty much the, um, the timeline. So that said, um, that, that was one thing we just discussed, so that the committee is aware of where that stands. Uh, two other items as far as the project itself. We, um, we authorized the architectural consultant that we had that the council previously uh, endorsed and, and uh, con con authorized a contract with to go to the next phase of site evaluations. Um, we identify only one site at this time, uh, consistent with the original charge from the town council. Um, and in the spirit of doing due diligence, the first site that was evaluated is the existing Jockey Hollow facility and, and location. So um, that was somewhat of a, um, you know, a foregone conclusion that that would be one site that would be looked at. As I said, it was part of the original town council charge to the committee. So they are actively uh, working on that. As far as other sites, um, the committee spent quite a long time uh, going through a list that was provided uh, through the assessor's office from, uh, based on a request from the first selectman that I, I had made to identify open space that is town owned um, to see if there are any potential parcels that would be of any consideration. It's one of those things that I don't necessarily know that there's something there or not, but if we don't do the due diligence, we won't know. So we looked at that long list. We eliminated several that were, you know, it clearly could be uh, eliminated. So the, the end game is we have a short list that we need to research further. Um, I have contacted the first selectman and 
we are we will be setting up a meeting with uh, land use, parks and rec, public works, etc. Some department heads to look at those parcels to see um, what issues, if any, exist at those sites, um, or if they potentially could be viable or not. Um, other than that, uh, that's kind of where we stopped. Um, we're trying to see, again, we want to exhaust that before we start thinking about sites that would require a monetary investment for land acquisition. So we're trying to uh, look at that first. Um, that, and of course, knowing the third item is the offer that was uh, made, of course, contingent on other approvals internally, but we know the fire service had made that uh, offer in regards to fireman's deal. That's certainly another option on the table, but we're not at the point of saying formally assess that yet. So. That is it for the facility work group. All right, thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Um, first Lackman's update, uh, Mr. Bavick's not present and did not provide me anything in writing to present, so we'll move on from there. Unfinished Excuse business, me. yes. Um, may I have um, about seven questions, may I submit them to you to sure, you, for Sorkin? You want to say them on the record um, as well? I, no, I'll not uh, play nice and I will submit them mm -hmm. for review. Sure, absolutely. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Uh, moving on to unfinished business, health department fee schedule. Um, I think we covered that, correct? We're uh, a little we, premature we, still at this time? Uh, yeah. It's basically, uh, the, 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 the story with that is the Board of Health did meet uh, on this and did make some decisions. However, I had a subsequent conversation with the Board of Health Chair, and we have a little bit of a timing issue with the food ordinance that is also coming down the pike and the timing of that, um, given that we want to wait and do all four together. So uh, I'm going to ask that we, uh, again, hold off discussion on this at this time. I think the board, it would be prudent for the board to look at it again and perhaps um, make some make some tweaks and other considerations prior to us looking at it further, just again, based on the, the timing of that and the ordinances. And again, we're not, uh, there's no time sensitive issue at this point. No, the, the existing fee schedule uh, carries through June 30th of this year. So we have, we, we certainly have time to. Uh, All right, so we'll table that. And we'll uh, we'll kind of keep it on the, uh, on the unfinished business portion of the schedule until it's ready. Uh, moving on to new business. Um, I, I see the uh, gentleman from the uh, fire uh, departments have been here since your last on um, the agenda. I'm going to move you up so that you can make your presentation before they do so. Um, just to fill council in, in uh, strategic planning, as Mr. Kellogg pointed out in his report, um, we did have a uh, discussion in the last two meetings on moving forward with um, bonding, a uh, bonding package to council for the acquisition of fire apparatus, as we did see the presentation from Mr. Kreis during our budget deliberations. Um, we thought um, it would be appropriate at this point, uh, based upon where we were in our conversation, which is at SBC, which is um, at the point where we really want input from the Board of Finance at, at this time as to uh, the appetite, I guess, the, for bonding and how much bonding and when, um, the con conceptually, and then moving forward to a bid process uh, and really getting this thing moving forward, because conceptually, I think um, SPC was unanimous in moving this process forward based upon the due diligence they've done. So I thought the best way to do that, to get it before us, is to invite uh, the uh, department chiefs here uh, with, uh, just so they can present to us moving forward, and, uh, and then we would continue our deliberations in our subcommittee, and eventually we we'll, should see it soon, hopefully, on some type of bonding package uh, vote. So with that said, I don't know who wants to make a presentation, come forward. Uh, again, we've seen it, so if there's anything that you want to add or present, um, please please do so, but don't feel compelled to go crazy. Um, good evening, uh, my name is Bob Galbraith, uh, Chief of the Stevenson Fire Department. Okay. Um, President Kreis from Monroe had made up the fire apparatus replacement plan, mm -hmm. which I don't know if everybody has a copy, but I have extra copies if anybody wants. I like it. Yeah, I think all but three of us, only three of us have, a, or four of us have a copy, so okay. if you could circulate it, would be great. And, and I think if we look back, um, it was presented to us during the budget workshop uh, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, you're right, it was, it was in the package. Yeah. Yeah. Not that everybody carries their budget books around with them at all times. Except for, except for Ms. Martin, of course. We, we have. <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine was recycled. <laughs> we have this one. Yes. 
There's a whole bunch of them. So. Are there any? Ch there's no changes to this one. Um, if they are, there might be some updates. Right. Okay. There's some updates. Right. And I'll keep the right. new one. Page of apparatus. Suggested okay. framework page. Page. Whatever the number's on it. Okay. Okay. Towards the, towards the last page, highlighted in red. And we were asked by the Strategic Planning Committee if we could rank as to the apparatus that we needed to be replaced, which one should go first. Um, so we did one through five okay. on there, just in case Great. things had to be split up. Um, basically, it's, yeah. Most of the report is the same as it was before, just updated on the years. And new pricing. So, so uh, the pricing that is up in the suggested framework there, uh, that includes, I think it's a dealer discount, but not a manufacturer discount. So there may be even more of a discount on top of that. So if these were all bought at the same time or at least agreed upon to, to buy them at the same time. Um, anything else to add? So they're here for questions. Just to frame the issues, if I if I can, um, just for counsel for the record, what the, the what we will be looking at is, and, and really the urgency to meet with finances, can can we take on bonding in the rough amount of just under four million dollars in one fiscal year? That's the first question that's going to be decided, and that's why strategic planning asked them to rank uh, re, uh, re rank the uh, acquisition, and reluctantly, I think uh, they. And I want to thank them for doing that. Um, they've made it very clear, I want the record to be very clear, that it is their um, uh, very stern request that we acquire all of the apparatus together in one purchase for a number of reasons, um, including monetary discounts that are available that may not be available um, if we purchase them separately, but we did ask them to do that just so if, from a bonding perspective, we had to split it up, we, we had the opportunity to do that. Um, the other thing that um, was mentioned in Mr. Kelly's report um, that I think makes this um, certainly a ripe opportunity is the realization and, um, you know, I, I, I think there's been, um, we've had some very good meetings and strategic planning dispelling um, a lot of the, call them myths, false beliefs, statements that were out there as to um, the fire departments working together, uh, or the lack of them working together, which clearly was dispelled, and um, the fact that they've been looking themselves internally at consolidating uses with vehicles um, and really looking towards the future. So, um, you know, I just want to make sure the record is clear that really, uh, you know, I personally appreciate all the hard work they've done there. I think that the strategic planning committee was a little bit taken aback a few meetings ago about how um, you know, how much collaboration and cooperation that has been going on, um, which we weren't aware of. So I think those issues are what's really driving this to move this forward. Um, but really, we're looking at a um, from the town perspective and finance perspective, how much of the of the uh, bonding can we take on this you know the next fiscal year, this fiscal year, next fiscal year, fiscal year, and then um, the year after, and how can we do it in a way that satisfies. The needs. I yes, sure. I think it's important too that this full council remember because we have been reminded um, in strategic planning that a part of the enormity of this bonding package, really, if we were to do it, the whole thing, is because the town did not, in essence, keep the agreements that we had with the replacements um, that were to be. You know, scheduled, stacked, stacked and, and, and staggered mm -hmm. um, as we went along, which kind of put them and, and us behind the eight ball a little bit. And that was explained to us in strategic planning. So when you, as a full council, when we look at some of this, where it may seem a lot, and it is, but, and the bonding will be what determines probably where we go with it, keep in mind some of the way we got here because we kind of reneged on, on the promise um, that we would uh, uh, keep these purchases working. So I just want to make sure everyone knows that because we keep hearing it and reminding ourselves in strategic planning. So. But, but then we buy six or seven fire trucks 
just a couple seven of years ago. Seven, seven, seven years, years ago. Seven years ago. 2008, 2009. Okay, got it. 2009 is when they came in. Okay. If you, if you so go by NFPA or whatever, they're at half their life right now. Fine. <laughs> I, I knew we bought them seven years already. Yeah. Seven seven years time flies. <laughs> Mr. Collins? I just wanted to um, first echo I mean, some of your comments. I, I applaud the work that the fire departments have done in regards to um, you know, one thing that they were very uh, clear on is that their analysis um, that they undertook was a town of Monroe analysis. And you know, in the spirit of dispelling myths that, that may just be old, or maybe they're urban legends, who knows, but the, the concept of um, each department thinking they need, you know, one of this, and if, if one department gets this, then another department, that's not how they're operating. They were very clear that they looked at this from a town perspective. Um, and in terms of uh, being flexible with equipment, I'll give you, uh, I just want to call out a couple of examples of, of for example, replacements of um, engines such as 101 and 104, where they're looking to replace one engine with an engine tanker, another one with an engine rescue, and that is, that is a kind of non-traditional kind of dual purpose vehicle. And again, trying to be very flexible with our apparatus. Um, and by doing that, you'll see that they are proposing the elimination of one vehicle in this round of purchase and not replacing um, Rescue 120 by virtue of combining that with an engine. So I think that's uh, commendable that, um, that they're doing that and that they're, they're trying to be, uh, do some due diligence and be, um, and be responsible in that regard. The other, um, the other thing I wanted to uh, note is that there's been, I know, discussion in the past uh, about any potential sale of existing apparatus, like of a resale value, and I think they were very clear that they fully understand, and it, it should be noted for the record that any resale would come back to the town. Um, that is not is not the case that um, I think there is one vehicle somewhere in the fleet complement that, that is owned that is owned by Stephanie. So that um, which has a fifteen thousand dollar value currently um, is is owned by Stephanie, but presumably Stephanie would use that to offset its its other you know the expenses that are not on the town side. So I think you know the point being that um, you know stories of of. The, the, the sale of the old vehicles uh, going to the departments is not, uh, is not the case. Um, the only thing that I wanted to uh, just put out there, and again, it, it goes back to our reasons for, for needing to have a, a real meaningful discussion with Board of Finance in terms of our appetite for all this, um, is you know, I fully recognize that the, you know, the concept of doing a fire study kind of is interwoven in, you know, you would assume, you know, fire, looking at fire apparatus and how we do this would be certainly a huge component of, of that study. Um, the challenge that we have before us is that, you know, they have a, a pretty uh, time critical need right now that because things have been allowed to kind of atrophy for a while, there's certain things that are, are happening. So my only suggestion is that as we approach this, if, if there are concerns relative to um, the appetite for bonding uh, and They've been good enough to prioritize things that I'd like to explore opportunities that we could perhaps solve the critical needs. If that maybe that doesn't mean all. In other words, if there's a if we have to make some decisions, I'd like to still entertain um, meeting some critical needs that we could we could address some of this while allowing that study to move forward. That may be able to give us a bigger picture in a way that maybe still allows us to make a financial commitment to a vendor so that there's a commitment that we're not going to stop, we're going to continue purchasing, but maybe based upon how the study tells us versus other things. So in other words, I, you know, I don't have all the answers, I'm just trying to say that I think um, you know, that it, it would be nice if we had the luxury of the study available, but I don't think we can wait for it to, to start on this process, um, but it would be nice you know, to try and uh, maybe have a hybrid solution there if that's possible. But again, I'd want to do it in a way there that uh, that we could make some commitments that um, it's not just going to be we'll you know we'll, we'll solve one or two of these vehicles and and the rest is kind of nebulous. I'd like to have some commitment. Okay. So. Anybody else? Um, just a few other notes. Um, 
some of the, uh, I just want to bring it to your attention, one of the reasons why I think it's important to have this on our agenda, again, is any bonding or uh, potential bonding issues, we've been successful with getting um, the issues on our agenda well in advance of having to go out for bonding so that it's not uh, the alleged surprise that some may think it is because when people decide to pay attention, it's already had, they think it hadn't been discussed. Well, we're trying to dispel that rumor as well and get it out there clearly in front of um, everybody. So the other thing I just want to bring to your attention is, and, and you, you, you addressed all of this mm -hmm. at our last meeting, but it, uh, since, since our meeting, I've had a few conversations with those that were involved in the last acquisition. Some of the things that came up uh, as cautionary advice to us or to me was uh, make sure that uh, we address the uh, equipping of the vehicles, and that was addressed, hoses and ladders and things that I think last time, you know, maybe it wasn't a full understanding of what we were getting for the acquisition price and may have slipped through the cracks causing an additional uh, need for purchasing. So that's something just to keep in mind. And again, it was addressed. You're I the one. The last, the last time we did this, we asked like, for the, uh, when we sold our ladder truck, I think it was 75,000, it was around 75,000. <coughs> you know, we withheld that and we bought, updated our five inch holes or supply holes. Yeah, and I, and you brought it to our attention and it's yeah. ironic that it came up again and I was able to say that it was addressed in our meeting. Um, the second is Mr. Kellogg, the trade-in uh, clarity on that, that you know, there's concern that the trade-in of the vehicles, all of it was going back to some third party or independent, that's been addressed. Uh, and then the fire study as well. I just want to bring up with respect to the study, while it would be nice to have it, um, I think it was important that two meetings ago at SPC, and this is the stuff that some of us get to hear about all of us, um, that study and the willingness and even want, I would say, for the study had been presented to the town a number of years ago. And so if we really needed the study before the acquisition, there was plenty of opportunity to bring that uh, forward. It never never got out of certain offices in town, never was presented to us until we asked. And when there was a overwhelming, unanimous, absolutely, we do a study, we, we all fell back in our chairs. So I just want to bring, I, I think it's important that we recognize that it's not something that, you know, it, it just came up and ironically, it happened to be in conjunction. So it's been out there and, and no one acted on it. So I, I don't want that to be something that formally holds us back. That's my personal opinion, although it would be ideal to have it prior. I, I just want to make sure we all understand that. So other than that, I have no further comments. Mr. Kelly? If, I'm sorry if I may add one thing that I, I failed to mention earlier. It, I, the other thing that I'd like to um, explore further with the Board of Finance, I, we discussed this at SBC, and we understand now that you know the intent on the bulk purchase is to achieve some significant savings that um, we may we don't believe we would have otherwise. Um, that said, um, two things. One is, um, you know, uh, we certainly want you know the board of finance uh, to to weigh in on those negotiations with with the final. You know, however we proceed in structuring this uh, with with vendors. Um, however, I would, you know, I, I leave it up to finance to figure out if this is feasible or not from a finance perspective, but. I would very much like to um, find a way for us to get out of this, um, you know, every X years being hit with a relatively large ticket item in terms of having, you know, multiple apparatus. Because what's going to happen X years from now, all the ones that we bought seven years ago, we're going to be faced with the same thing. I'd like to get into a, a more regular equipment replacement program, such as what we've introduced for other departments um, where we're kind of doing things on a regular rotating basis um, and uh, we're keeping basically keeping the fleet uh, fresh. Um, I understand the financial issues and the, um, the literal age of all the equipment now puts, it in, puts us in a position where we're trying to deal with it all at once, but I'd like to find a way, and if we can do this and structure something um, with finance, find a way that we ultimately get to that point where we're, we're not doing this every X years and that the fire service knows, just like EMS and Public Works and everyone else that, you know, every so often there's a rotating vehicle replacement and whatever it is, you know, X, you know, whatever, you know, every year or every other year there's this unit and it, you just kind of uh, figure it out, but. A couple of comments. Yeah. Sure. Um, first of all, it takes about a year to build a fire truck. From the right, day right, that right. you sign the agreement, mm -hmm. or whoever signs the agreement, it takes about a year for it to arrive in town. Okay. So if you bonded it in 16, 17, mm -hmm. it might not arrive until 17, 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
fire trucks do not come fully equipped. They come with doors, compartments, and a water tank and a pump, for the most part, unless it's a rescue or a ladder truck or whatever. So there's no equipment. We are taking most of the equipment on the current fire trucks and putting it onto the new fire rack. Uh, in Stepney, we're going from three big pieces down to two big pieces as a replacement. Um, Stevenson's replacing a tanker that's 28 years old. It's desperately needed and has issues. So, uh, okay. you know, all this is, has been around for a long time. And I think back seven years ago, we saved the town close to a million dollars with fire apparatus manufacturer that we went for at that time. We're trying to save the town the most money that we can, and also by cutting down a big piece of apparatus, a big truck, by only replacing six with five, that's gonna save on the town budget as well. Um, the next big piece would be in 2018, a refurbishment of the Stevenson Rescue. And then we would not be before you guys until 2023, so it's another seven years. Right, right, right. Again. Okay. Um, yeah, unless we go with what Mr. Kellogg suggested, yep. so it might be sooner. That works out. Okay. The, the only other thing to suggest that the town start doing would be to put some money aside. Yeah, I can't even is. tell you how much to put aside. Right. Because right now, a, a, a fire engine that was $450,000 seven years ago is now up to about almost six to $700,000 today. And that's all thanks to the EPA, the NFPA, all those. I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to say this is a, we lived in this town 52 years already. So I would just like to thank you for the service you do because Without you guys, if there was a fire, you're helpless. I mean, we're helpless. So just like the one that burned down, but we've had two fires lately. Yep. So uh, I, I think you do a fantastic job. You have, you certainly have our support. Anybody else? Um, all right, so again, the purpose SPC is an arm of council. So the reason why I wanted to bring it forward is it's our intention to move this over to finance with yes. town council's full endorsement. I think it's important mm -hmm. for finance. So. Mm -hmm. I see a nod of heads. We have everybody's yeah, endorsement to move this forward, correct? Right? Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right. So with that said, that's where we're going. So thank you very much thank for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all thank for coming out. All right. Moving back to uh, new business A, we have the resolution regarding the State of Connecticut DOT agreement for the runabout, roundabout, 675 million terms. Like Mr. Paul. I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution uh, regarding uh, State of Connecticut DOT agreement for right-of-way acquisition related to the roundabout for property located at 675 Monroe Turnpike, also known as the intersection of Route 110, Shelton Road, and Route 111 Monroe Turnpike. And then uh, let it be resolved that the town council does hereby agree that Stephen J. Fabric, as first selectman of the town of Monroe, is authorized and directed to execute and deliver any and all documents associated with the right of way acquisition agreement for 675 Monroe Turnpike on behalf of the town of Monroe. All right, so motion uh, by Ms. Lapels is our second. second, second by Mr. O'Rourke. Um, discussion? I'll preface the discussion just piggybacking what Mr. Rourke said. Um, LNA met this evening, reviewed this, uh, voted unanimously for its consideration by council. Mr. Schatzlein was present yeah. and presented a very compelling uh, presentation to uh, have us move forward with this. But this is exactly what we did at the last town council meeting yep. with two different properties. Yep. Any comments? No discussion? All right. No. Seeing none, a call for a vote. All those in favor? And against, that motion carries eight to zero. Moving on to B, resolution DOT regarding the Route 25 bridge replacing Mr. Lewis. I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution regarding the uh, State of Connecticut DOT agreement for right-of-way acquisition related to the Route 25 bridge replacement number 02219 for property located at 19 Old Newtown Road. Motion by uh, Ms. Lapellis is our second. Second by Mr. O'Rourke. Uh, discussion, ditto to what I just said. Any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Against, motion carries eight to zero. Um, moving on to C, 
Um, we uh, this is in our packet this evening, as per Mr. Kellogg and Mr. O'Rourke. We did start the discussions regarding this. There were a few comments. We anticipate continuing discussions. Uh, it's not ready for consideration by council yet, unless I'm wrong. No, so we'll right. just move on beyond this. This will be on unfinished business in the future. We'll see it again. D, uh, the EMS administrative assistant job description, Ms. Lopez. I'd like to make a motion to approve the emergency medical services administrative assistant position. Motion by Mr. Pellis, is there a second? <coughs> second by Mr. Rooney. Uh, discussion, again, I'll say that uh, LNA reviewed this, unanimously approved uh, this description with one change. Um, in the physical demand section, it previously said 10 pounds, it was increased to 35 pounds. Mr. Kellogg pointed out that the similar job descriptions uh, were uh, likewise modified, so we wanted this to be consistent. Ms. Lombardi confirmed it and made that change. Just, uh, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, one small correction. I had, I think I wrote down uh, 30 pounds. Or did it, was it 35? Excuse 35. me. 35. Excuse me. My, my mistake. 35 pounds. 35. Okay. Um, Ms. Lombardi was present, as was Ms. Sawicki and Mr. Kellogg. We had a full house at uh, LNA and uh, everybody, everybody endorsed it as well. So, any discussion? Yeah. Yeah. The only one I, I had yeah. is, is this going to be a standard thing where it's in physical demands? Mr. Chairman, specific vision abilities required by this job include close vision and the ability to adjust focus. This is really, about? this is a, this is a, uh, you know, an ADA thing. Um, you really need to have the physical demands spelled out. Uh, so that if you get yeah. challenged. So I, I expected to hear that. So what are the specific vision abilities? If we're saying that it's fairly nebulous, don't you know? What are the specific vision abilities? Yeah, I usually spell out, you know, close it. and, and yeah. distance and, and so, so on and so forth. I, that's how I do mine. I, I that's, that's perfect. I, I would just, I would have just expected if we make a statement like that, it would have been spelled out, but that's just my thoughts. If it was a precedence that anybody is reading or doing anything like that in all our job, job descriptions, that should just be a yeah. Understand. Because because uh, you have to make reasonable accommodations, and so it, it really should visually be, impaired. It really needs to be spelled out. I mean, I think they had a case in Pennsylvania where they had a social worker, and they said that uh, uh, they needed somebody to be able to read, you know, and the state turned they they. De denied that, and they said you can get readers. So you really need to wow. spell out those yeah, physical. It, are you demands. saying it's not spelled out appropriately? Pardon? Are you saying this is not spelled well, out? Well, it's not spelled out. It's just saying physical, physical. No, it says visual. to include close vision and the ability to adjust focus. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Okay, it is. That's appropriate. Yeah. It's a person. Yeah. 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 person yeah. Yeah. Did the town attorney You're or speaking employee relations Asians. person look at it? That's well, Ms. you presume Ms. Lombardi went about it from Ryan and she does most items, but yeah. I don't well, know. I don't just see a lot of things in our job I descriptions that open us up to a lot. I don't run it by, I don't run it by attorneys when I do my job descriptions. But you're all, yeah, you're usually yeah. squared away, though. <laughs> you're pretty squared away. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Uh, I, the other thing that we didn't uh, point out is it does now include a the necessity for a state of Connecticut EMT certification, which was not there prior. Okay. Yeah, that was, All right. That was so, the cool. That was it. So all for the discussion. All those in favor? Against. Motion carries eight to zero. Uh, second public participation. Would anybody like to participate? Seeing none. I'll close second public participation. Is there a motion to adjourn? Approved. Approved. Motion by Mr. Pella. Second by Mr. Rooney. All those in favor? Motion carries.